Hey Virgo, thank you so much for coming to your weekly love reading. This should resonate for sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Those of you that are cross-watching, welcome, welcome. This can either be your situation or your partner's. It just kind of depends on who's uh, is here watching the reading, okay? If you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to receive alerts for when I post my readings. Also, please feel free to comment. I love reading what you guys are saying and interacting, so please, you know, comment. So with that being said, Virgo, and as I'm saying this, the lovers flies out. Eww. Uh, let's go ahead and hop directly into your reading. Who is Virgo dealing with romantically? Who is Virgo dealing with romantically? Okay, the magician. So it's funny. Like, I feel like you guys are consistently dealing with the same person. I know some people were in the comments like, Oh, that's my twin flame. Yeah, that can be twin flame, whatever. Uh, this is definitely Aries, Gemini, or Virgo. Okay, and I'll get more into it in a sec. How does Virgo feel about their person of interest romantically? Okay, King of Cups, or it can be a um, Scorpio. Or, you know, Scorpio, Cancer, or Pisces. I feel like Cancer or Pisces may be secondary, so... Uh, that could be their moon sign rising or Venus. Um, you also can be dealing with a Leo, um, that is coming in strongly here, but this person is very solid or you view them as a very solid person. What is the current issue or situation with Virgo and their love? Okay. The six of pentacles. Beautiful. That is Capricorn. I'm sorry. That's Taurus. What it is an external influence or block for these two romantically? Virgo and their person of interest. What's currently blocking or an external influence? Okay, the Empress. So that can be Libra or Taurus or Cancer. Sometimes I look at this as Cancer too because, I don't know, I'm weird like that. However, um, for those of you that are kind of on that like Virgo, Libra cusp, uh, that's definitely, um, a possibility here. Or if you're into like the Vedic or whatever, then that definitely could be you as well. Or I guess it wouldn't be you, but maybe like the Libras fall into the Virgo, right? Okay. What's the best potential outcome here romantically? Best potential outcome here romantically. Oops, one more time. Sorry. I wasn't thinking of the date. What's the best potential outcome romantically for a Virgo and their person of interest? Woo. Okay, strength. So I do want to say this. I've tried to record your guys' reading I don't know how many goddamn times. And like either something would happen, it wasn't recording, you know, uh, the dogs were going crazy or something. So it's funny to me because a lot of the same cards that I've, that I've pulled this last three or four times are the same. I feel like you and this person, <clears throat> I feel like you've really had to fight for this person. I think that, you know, this is something that you've had to call in a lot of strength and you've had to figure out, you know, whether or not it was worth fighting for. I do think that there is a level of structure here. Uh, between you and your partner. I think that there's definitely a foundation that's been rebuilt between the two of you. And I do think that this is some type of situation that is either a past life relationship, soulmate, karmatic, something, right? But it keeps coming up between you and this person. So I am getting that heavily. With the magician here, you know, this person can be a teacher, uh, this person can be somebody who's into technology. This can be somebody who, um, you know, is highly intelligent. They have all the tools at their fingertips. Um, they're very adaptable or, uh, you know, have the ability to adapt. Um, they're very open-minded, highly intuitive. You know, they can change. They, they, they can make something nothing, right? They have the ability to communicate in a way where not only one person understands them, but multiple people. What's, why is the magician here? What's being manifested? Justice. Okay. Definitely also can be dealing with a Libra or, you know, as far as like this is concerned. And I think I already said with the magician, 
it can be a professor, somebody in the tech field. It can be somebody who works with their hands, right? Uh, that blue collar. Um, but with justice here, I feel like this person is very balanced. I feel like they're very fair. I feel like they have a lot of harmony in their life. They have a lot of harmony, you know, with the, you know, the thoughts also outweighing uh, the heart. You know, this person is definitely somebody who you would consider marrying. Uh, this is also, you know, seventh house, right? Seventh house is all about relationships, love, uh, balance, you know, who you're supposed to be with. And I feel like this person, you know, is definitely somebody that you can see yourself marrying. This can also be somebody who's an attorney, a judge, um, somebody who, you know, does the right thing, makes a lot of sacrifices. I don't know why, but I'm getting like a social worker. Um, it's a very, it's a very positive energy here. And again, I do think that this is somebody who is coming back around or a relationship that you've given another chance to. If this is somebody new, this is somebody from a past life that you've known. This can also be a Scorpio or a Capricorn. Um, you know, I do feel like there is some type of transformation that this person has gone through or that your relationship is going through. Yeah, and I said, what's being transformed? The Ten of Cups. You know, and that's definitely, you know, Mars and Pisces. So I feel like for this person uh, specifically, family is very important, right? It's like when their mind is right, like this person is very like, I don't want to say in the clouds, but they do have a different type of uh, thought process when it does come to love. Like they think anything is possible, right? And a lot of times because this person is coming up as a magician as well, they they think like this because they can turn something into nothing. Something that seems completely crazy, out of left field, that's not obtainable, this person can manifest and they have the ability to manifest very, very quickly uh, because of their intuition. And I feel like this person does understand what it's like to, um, you know, put the work in. And they do believe in themselves, which is kind of really, really interesting this person all may also may have kids or you may have kids with them, um, you know, or they're a caretaker of some sort as well. But how I look about how I look at this is this, right? So if you think about Pisces, Mars, right, or Mars and Pisces, to me, how I look at that is somebody that's very optimistic, how they take charge or how they go about things is in a very optimistic, loving and caring way. It's like, don't worry, we can do this. Like we have this, right? Versus sitting there, you know, highly stressed. Like I do think that they, there is a level of stress here, like where they do go back and forth. However, you know, they fall back on their intuition at all times. Hopefully this is making sense and I'm not just talking out of my ass. Um, one card here for Virgo's person of interest romantically. Ooh. Okay, so seven of pentacles reversed. I think that that's awesome because here's the thing about the seven of pentacles reversed. First of all, you know, it's no longer waiting, right? And that seven falls back to the six. It's no longer one person waiting for something to be given. It's, it's whatever uncertainty or unreliability that you felt like this person had, it, it's going away, right? Like there's something definitely fair about what's being given. And, and there is a level of balance that's definitely, uh, you know, instilled here. And the thing about this is this person is coming in very, very solid. It's like, if there's something that needs to be tweaked, they have the ability to tweak it. I also feel like too, you feel the need that you are meant to be with this person. Okay. High priestess, Taurus or Cancer. But it's like also like you're waiting for for everything just to kind of come about. Maybe there's some type of secret here or maybe there's something about this person that you're waiting to completely unfold. However, I do think that you and this person are destined to be with one another. And I do strongly feel like it's written. It's, it's, it's already written in the stars or written in the books. It's just the process of everything kind of coming to fruition, right? There is definitely a level of balance that this person gives you in your life. Look, the Six of Pentacles is here 
all the six of pentacles, you know, the seven goes to the six. So I don't know. I feel really, really good about this person, Virgo. All right. We have the king of cups as how you feel about them. So obviously this person is very loving, very caring, right? They're very persistent and practical and stable with their emotions. Uh, they're very attached. They can come across as something very tough or independent. However, it's like this person is very, very loyal and that's how you view them. And I do think that you feel like this person has had to make certain sacrifices. How does Virgo feel? Jeez, that's a lot of cards. Okay, let me put it back. Hella cards popped out, but we're going to put those back. How does Virgo feel about their person of interest romantically? Okay, Prince of Wands. You know, so how you feel is the King of Cups, the Prince of Wands is here. You know, as loving and caring as this person is, maybe you feel like no matter what is needed emotionally, this person has your back. But also, too, you know, this person does or they may have an immature side to them. Not completely immature, right? Because it's still a prince. But there's still something that's unformed with this person. Like, they're still in the process of growing. Um, however, you know, this is definitely, it can be Leo, Sag, or Aries, or also Gemini as well. However, I do feel like this person, at times, you may think that, like, they're constantly exploring other options, or they're out here looking with, you know, where it can grow. There's something very interesting about them because their mind is always seeking. However, they're actively going after, you know, what they want. And I think for you, it makes you a little bit nervous how friendly this person is. However, the all gift is here. So, you know, this person may be somebody that you're ready to give your all to. This may be somebody that, you know, if they said, hey, let's get married, you're like, fuck it, YOLO, let's do it. Or maybe you're ready to propose to them, right? This person you feel like has everything. And as I said that, the two of cups flew out. This person can have a uh, Venus in Cancer. Or it could be Cancer, Pisces, or Gemini, because I always look at the two of cups as Gemini. Um, but definitely here, there is some type of bond. There is some type of loving relationship and partnership between the two of you. It's something that's unsaid. And it's like when you guys get together and you may be from different backgrounds, different culture back cultural backgrounds or something like that. But when you come together, it's something very beautiful. It's like, you know, you guys can sit there and talk for hours or not say anything at all. There is a level of, you know, uh, there is definitely some type of attachment here. And I do feel like it's still in the process of forming, but it's beautiful. What does Virgo like about their person of interest? Ace of Pentacles. I think that, you know, this person gives you a level of gratification. I feel like, you know, Virgo, they offer you that ability you know, to uh, actually put your hands on something. Like this person is always trying to give you something or show you that they're here for you or that they care about you. And I do think that if there's been something that's been tied up or some type of struggle, especially with this nine of wands here, it's, it's still something that you, like even if you guys are suspended, right? Or even in times where you and this person haven't talked, you know, the moment you get back together and you're able to touch one another and be in each other's presence and have a conversation, it's like whatever was suspended comes, you know, it snaps right out of it. Because with you and this person, it doesn't last forever. It's like you guys are so pull or, or um, cosmetically attached. I don't even know if that's that's a phrase, but that's what they're saying. It's like it's only a matter of time before you come back together. Before this person, you know, is in your arms and, and you and you and them are having some type of loving embrace. And as I said, that the Queen of Cups comes out. So, you know, Cancer, Pisces or Scorpio, definitely Cancer energy. You know, you love the fact that this person is so, you know, uh, encouraging, romantic. You know what I mean? Like this person provides you that level of stability. 
that person is, you know, in your personal opinion, they're a great parent. Uh, you know, they're very welcoming. They're very friendly. They, they have a level of nurturing. You come to their house, they're like, hey, what can I get you to drink? Hey, are you cool? Do you need anything? Here, here's food, right? Here, what can I do for you? Like they cater to you. And I think that that's something that's very sexy. You know, they're very passionate when it comes to you. They're like, oh, you're upset? Okay, come on, come on over. Just give me a hug. You're cool. I got you, right? Um, what is something Virgo doesn't like about this person romantically? Ooh, that just shot out the queen of pentacles. Okay. So that could be Capricorn, uh, Virgo or Taurus. However, that is definitely a Capricorn card or it can be cancer as well. I think that this person has a level of duality about them. That's why they do. I think that they may have Gemini somewhere in their chart uh somewhere because or they're you know libra gemini something because there, there's something very like there's there's a level of duality like this person um can be very stubborn at times this person can pretend like they don't care if they're mad at you like they're like oh no i'm not talking to you you can go ahead and sit there right like or you know there's a level of discipline or a letter level of like order that this person needs to have in their life. And I think sometimes you feel like, you know, their ability just to kind of like cut things off and move forward. Like you don't like that. You don't like that at times they can be so loving and caring, but yet cold at the same time. Also too, six of swords, sometimes how they communicate, it's, it's very harsh. And I think it's almost like in a very scientific way, like there's something new about this person or there's something here where how they communicate can come off a little bit harsh at times. And I think that that makes you take a back step or makes you take a step back and really like get in your head and worry. You also can be worried about who else they're talking to, who else they're communicating with. You know, I feel like this person, there is a level of unpredictability with them and I think that that makes you nervous. I'm going to be honest. All right. So for uh, the situation, we have the Six of Pentacles. Now, the Six of Pentacles is a minor arcana for justice. So that's kind of interesting. Also, the Six of Pentacles is uh, Moon and Taurus. So something about fairness, something about how things are being distributed in the right or wrong way, right? A level of balance or generosity. Let me ask, what's causing the Six of Pentacles? The Ace of Wands. There may be somebody right now who is more proactive. Let me ask, how does Virgo feel about this? The Six of Cups. Scorpio energy. You know, and the Sixes, right? There's a level of balance that's coming. <clears throat> There's, it, it, it's weird. It's like, you know, when you give, it makes you feel good. You know, it's a reunion. It's peace. It's harmony. Like with all these sixes here, it's beautiful, right? It's all about initiating something as well. And it can be the fact that maybe, you know, you and your partner are going into the idea of, hey, should we have a child? Hey, should we adopt a child? Hey, what does it look like if we merge your families together? You know, um, having the physical aspect, the material aspect, as well as the emotional aspect being balanced out here is beautiful. Nine of Cups. There is an abundance of love here. There is some type of illusion to what is to come. I do feel like that. Why are you showing us the Nine of Cups for the situation with Virgo and their person of interest? With the Queen of Cups, okay, Cancer, uh, mostly Cancer, I'm going to say this. This person may have a lot of Cancer in their chart, but it can be Scorpio or Pisces. Um, maybe this person wants to move in with each other. Maybe, you know, you or this person, right? It can be you that has a lot of Cancer in your chart. You know, there is something here on moving. Where does this go? 
like we are contributing into a relationship. Maybe you guys are working on your home, right? Maybe you guys are working on your backyard or your front yard or you're tearing apart the kitchen. There's something here with working together, but doing it in a way where you're both happy. It's like this person provides emotional stability while you're able to provide that physical stability. It's really beautiful. And I do think it has to do with, you know, something that's grounding you guys together. It's something that you're both contributing in that's providing that level of stability. How does, how does Virgo's person of interest feel about the situation? Ace of Cups. They feel good about it. They feel like this is something that, you know, they can really, uh, get into. This is something where it's beginning. It's something very raw. There's some type of raw emotions here. How does Virgo feel about it? The Wheel of Fortune. You feel like things are changing with you and this partner. Your relationship is going to a whole other level, okay? What's changing? The Five of Cups, okay? Um, with the Five of Cups here, and that is uh, Scorpio as well. I do want to throw that out there, but... <clears throat> What's interesting about this five of cups is there, there is a level of guilt. You or this person no longer is feeling guilty for how things happened, right? It's also too, like, I feel like, you know, whatever you were scared of prior, you know, that's changing. It's like, now you guys are really going after, you know, whatever type of unpleasant events were happening. You know, there's a level of reassurance here on your partner's end. It's like things are completely changing. You guys are no longer at a distance upset because you're not together. Also, too, it's like the weight of the past and its consequences. Yeah, you remember them. However, it's like you're learning and you're leaving them behind because you don't want to be attached to those and you don't want to allow this to hold, you know, you or this relationship back because it's beautiful. Three of Pentacles. Because you are now working together as one. You guys are now coming together, right? And there's a level of security here. That's Mars and Capricorn. Mars and Capricorn is all about, you know, um, being very efficient, being very logical, you know, setting procedures in place in order to succeed, saying something and doing it. Don't tell me you're going to do something and not do it. If you tell me that, you better follow through. You know what I mean? It's that type of thing. It, it's it's about every time this person does something, you or this person does something that you said you were going to do or they said you were going to do. It's, it's like, oh my God. It's like you guys are reconnected again because you realize that how you're working in this partnership is beautiful. Yo, I'm really happy and stoked for you guys because honestly, like, Every time I sat down to do your reading, it was a beautiful reading every fucking time. So I'm happy that I'm sitting down now and it is the same type of energy. It's really beautiful. All right, I'll stop rambling. Okay, an external influence. It can be a mom, right? The empress. It can be the fact that somebody wants to have kids. It can be the fact that somebody does have kids. It can be where you guys go from here, right? Can you give me more information on the empress of why that this is a block or an external influence? The four of wands. I feel like somebody is very much ready to settle down. I feel like this person is tired of waiting. I feel like this person is ready to get married. This person is ready to solidify things. I feel like, you know, with this, this is definitely Venus and Aries. I feel like this person is waiting. It's waiting for some type of celebration. They're waiting for that news to come through. They know it's coming, right? And it's funny because here you are, Virgo, and that's Venus and Virgo. It's like, you know, for them, I feel like they feel like you and, this, you and them work well to, with one another. And it's, it's like, we've already done the hard work. Now somebody's sitting here waiting, right? They're, they're waiting for the results of all the hard work that they've done. It's an inevitable. For them, it's inevitable. Like, you guys are going to get married. You guys are going to have an amazing life with one another. Queen of Pentacles. Hello, as I'm talking about getting married. I mean, to me, that is the wife card. That's Capricorn, Virgo, or uh, Taurus, but more so that's Capricorn as well as uh, Cancer, right? It's about having that perfect foundation 
that's that's very giving right it, and there's something very like zenful or, or very like zen about this person they have a lot to offer you or this person has a lot to offer and i feel like you know that is being seen here by your partner or by you and you may be seeing the same thing from one another right however i do feel like you know the nine of wands is here because this person is tired of waiting. It's like, when is this going to happen? Right? They're standing their ground. They, they feel like something is coming, right? But it's not there yet. And I feel like for whatever reason with them, it's just kind of like, okay, how much longer do I have to hold on before I can acknowledge the fact that I'm ready for a level of forward movement? This person doesn't like to be stuck. I'm going to say that. They like to move quickly, and I think that they change their mind really frequently. I am going to say that. They, there is a level of attention that is required here, and this is uh, Moon and Sag. And, you know, this person, you know, they're on a journey, right? A healing. They're into exploring. But, you know, that's something like... They need movement. They need constant movement. They don't like feeling like they're stuck. One card here, please, for the uh, external influence. Okay, Seven of Wands. This makes sense to me. Um, you know, this is Mars and Leo. They don't want to. They don't want to look stupid waiting. They also want to do the right thing. They also want to stand up for what they believe in and express that to you in the correct manner. And it's also interesting, too, because the Seven of Wands is also about a level of clarity that's needed. It's like, what is this? What are we doing here? What's the next step? I don't want to sit, stay sedentary, right? Um, the world, right? A level of gratification, a level of completion here. Uh, that is Capricorn, Taurus, uh, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius. That's learning from the past that if things stay stuck with you, this person moves on quickly. You have to make your decision. And I know that that's hard, Virgo, because you have to go through this thought process. But if you want them, then you need to seal this deal. How does Virgo feel about the external influence here? Whew. The three of wands with the star card. I feel like you're waiting, so maybe it's your person that's waiting. Maybe it's your person that needs to do something, but that there's a level of attraction. It's like you're waiting for everything to come through. You're waiting, you know, and and I feel like for whatever reason, this is also Aries. Um, you may be waiting for when this person, you know, what you're hoping for finally comes back. Or what you're hoping for, if marriage is something that you want, that's now coming to you. It's like you, you've you done the work. You've communicated that to the universe. You've asked for help. You've said, like, you know, you see a shooting star, you're like, I really just want my family. Like, I want a solid foundation with a family. And then, boom, you have it. How does Virgo's person of interest feel about the external influence? Let me ask one more time. How does Virgo's person of interest feel about the external influence here? Okay, two of cups. You know, that's a level of involvement that I feel like they're ready for. The only thing that's going on right now, and I'm going to tell you, is we have the magician. So there you are, Virgo. Virgo, Gemini, or Aries with the six of cups. Memory, Okay. I feel like it's really taking that leap of faith and taking what you have and doing something with it. I feel like it's no longer second guessing yourself, but then having that level of forward movement. Don't sit here and wait and just hope that this is a memory. It's about taking action. It's about doing the right thing. It's about thinking about, you know, you and this person. Like, can you live without this person? If the answer is no, then what are you waiting for? Right? Um, so I do. I think that this is very, very beautiful. Okay. As your outcome, we do have the strength card. So this is Leo. This can also be something, you know, fighting your ego. This can be fighting for love. This can be, you know, having the strength to tame the beast. 
or, you know, having enough courage to hop on top of our inner, you know, animalistic, uh, raw emotions and having, you know, the ability to say, Hey, this is what I want. What's the plan for those of you that this has brought enough clarity. I love you. And, um, I will talk to you later. Peace.